Hello everyone, today we're going to be picking up with the fourth installment of my series on the Sun Tzu Bing Fa, or the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Last time we talked about the first thing which, um, which Sun Tzu used to characterize or judge how warfare is going to pan out. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the second one first, and maybe if we have enough time, talk about the third. So the first one was the way, or Tao, the same Tao as Taoism, but the second one that we're going to be talking about is heaven, or Tian. Now, the sentence structure that we have is much simpler than the one that we talked about in the last one. We have a topic marker here, or a nominalization marker, behind heaven. Our topic, then, is heaven. Write it here for us. And then we just have a basic equivocation. If you remember from early on, A, comma, B, yeah, it's just an equivocation of A equals B. Now in this case, if we take Tian as our A, or topic, we actually have three comments, B, C, and D, which are all equivocations. So A equals B, A equals C, A equals D. Pretty simple. Now the sentence structure is simple, but some of the ideas behind these terms that we see here are actually, they carry a lot of baggage. I'll say that. Now the first one, this first couple that we have, is actually something that many people might have heard of in some in some manner the first one being yin and the second one being yang these are the same uh in in like more common english pronunciation you see them as like yin and yang something like that now there are there are concepts that appear in many different schools of thought in early chinese history uh, or in early chinese philosophy um, including Taoism, and in this case, we're talking about here in, in the Art of War, in the Bing Fa. So, they have a lot of baggage, but if you remember from when I introduced this course, I'm going to kind of assume that we're just reading this to read it, as opposed to supplying all that additional baggage that you would have if you have read widely uh, in classical Chinese. So today I'm just going to give you some basic ideas that are generally associated with uh, yin and yang, but not go too deep into the connotations of that. So on a fundamental level, they are both phases of qi. Now we don't have to talk about that too much, but we can basically think of qi as kind of like this essence which permeates all of the universe, every object uh, contains qi, and it has different phases, and depending on different situations, the qi will change, and it might be more yin or might be more yang. Um, but in order to really get a grasp on, on that concept, we, you really need to read other texts. So today we're just going to think of it in kind of its general basic meanings, which are for yin, yin is the female side of qi. Yin is female. Uh, so we'll just copy down phases down here for this one, phases. So yang is male. Okay, so there is a kind of association between the male and female and yin and yang. Now, going beyond that, there's also kind of negative connotations which go along with yin and more positive connotations which go, go along with yang. And that's something that you have to work with uh, in early Chinese philosophy because that's basically the stance that they took at the time. And it was repeated in many different texts. So let's do some basic uh, associations here. So if yin is bad, then yang is good. If yin is cold, then yang is warm. If yin is wet, then yang is dry. Things like this. Another thing is that um, actually if you're talking about a mountain or a river, a mountain and a river both have a yin and yang side. So for uh, a mountain, say this is a very basic mountain, pardon my drawing skills, they're not the greatest, but say this is a mountain, and then here's the sun over here, very nice little picture. So the sunny side of the mountain is the yang side, and the shady side over here is the yin side, okay? Now for a river, we'll do a cross section of the river, so this is 
imagine the river is flowing into and out of the screen and then you have the sun over here again actually the bright side of the river will be the opposite of the mountain it will be the one away from the sun whereas the yin side the shady side will be the one closer to the sun because it's it the sun actually doesn't hit down in inside of here so if you ever see a chinese word which ha which includes yin and yang sometimes you might be able to assume the location of it relative to uh, like say it's a city if it's a city name and it has yang in it and then it's near mount and it's near mountain then you might think of it oh it's on the sunny side of the mountain or vice versa if it's if it's uh nearby a river then it might be on the like say northern side of the river because remember china is in the northern hemisphere so the sun is going to be in the south so generally you know the sun is in the south over here and then our location is north of the sun okay just some some stuff to add to our understanding of this but so what we see here is an equivocation between heaven and then yin and yang so heaven it is the phases of qi. It is yin and yang. Okay? You can develop your understanding of that based on our further reading here and reading of other texts as well as we get to them. Okay, so now the second one here, I kind of took up a little bit of space here, so I'll have to draw a line like this. So we have han. And shu. Okay? Han is cold or winter. Shu is uh, hot or summer. Okay, so this is literally just saying, you know, the heavens or the sky. It's it's cold and hot. It's it's the the winter months and the and the summer months or the warm and cold months of the year. And related to that, we have another one here, which is also talking about basically time, which is shi and zhi. So shi, it basically means time, but it also can mean seasons or divisions. Okay? And zhi is kind of like regulations or a system. So basically what he's talking about here is that heaven is the way that time is going on. So it's, it's the time of year that the conflict is happening. It's whether it's hot or cold. Another thing related to yin and yang that you'll see in other texts is you can basically think of the phases of qi as somewhat of a of a sine curve, if you if you're familiar with that, in uh, in mathematics. So you think of um, if this is if this is time, along here we see time flowing this direction. The peak of qi, which would be the yang. This is the yang up here. Yang. That would be in the summer when everything is lively, everything's growing in green. Whereas the dip down here in the, in the phases of qi, which, is, which corresponds to, to yin, actually would be in the winter months. Okay? So all of what he's saying here is talking about the flowing of time and recognizing the time of year and what's going to be happening at that specific time of year, which might influence the out uh, the conclusion of the warfare. So, if you know someone is going, they're planning their attack during a time when it's commonly going to be like a winter storm or something, then it might impact them. Or if it's in the middle of summer, when normally there would be um, crops growing, that might influence things because the crops might get destroyed, or the military might actually have access to things like the crops that are there. So this is all just about uh, assessing the time when the warfare is happening, right? And that, how that time might influence things based on cosmology or just based off of things like resource management. But yeah, really simple sentence, but with a lot of uh, complex baggage behind it in terms of specifically yin and yang. But at the end of the day, we have heaven. It is yin and yang. 
it is hot and cold or winter and summer. It is seasons and the regulation of them because the seasons, they progress at a fairly standard, in a fairly standard way, right? So that's that. So that's the second of the, of the five different things that Sun Tzu uses to judge the way that warfare will come out. All right, next time we'll pick up with the third one, which is D or earth, complementary to heaven. Thanks.